Hello everyone and welcome to the top 25 free tools for VMware vSphere webinar presented by vExperts David Davis and Kendrick Coleman. I'm Brian Green from TrainSignal and I'd like to take a minute to tell you what to expect in the next 70 minutes. The presentation will take approximately one hour, after which we'll have 10 additional minutes for a question and answer session. Please feel free to submit your questions in the questions box throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait till the end. Also, do use the questions box if you have any technical difficulties during the presentation, and we'll do our best to assist you. Today's presentation will be recorded and will be available to view shortly after the presentation concludes at trainsignal.com slash blog slash webinars. But don't worry, you don't need to scramble to write that down. We'll email you the information about how to view the recording. Before leaving the webinar, you will be prompted to take a short survey. TrainSignal wants to hear from you, so please take a few minutes to complete the survey. We'll also choose three participants from today's audience to each receive a prize package. Those three winners will get a copy of both David Davis's VMware vSphere 5 training course and the vNerd shirt. But in order to be eligible, you will need to fill out a quick survey that follows this presentation. If you have additional comments or feedback, feel free to send any notes to kasha at trainsignal.com. That's K-A-S-I-A at trainsignal.com. And with that, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Here's David Davis. Hi, this is David Davis from Train Signal, and uh, Kendrick is going to share his desktop here so you can see our presentation, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, I'm excited to talk about three tools today. Uh, I think we just need to hand the ball over to Kendrick so uh, he can share off his desktop. Let me see. Can you guys not see it right now? Can you see it? Okay. All right. As long as we can see it, let's get going. Great. All right. Well, um, my name is David Davis from Train Signal, and today's presentation is uh, the best free tools for vSphere management in 2012. Uh, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a V expert. I uh, just upgraded my vCP to a vCP5, a vCAP, a CCIE. I've been writing articles and creating videos uh, for numerous websites and, of course, for trainsignal.com. Uh, and, of course, I spoke at VMworld, uh, a couple different VMworlds, uh, with Kendrick uh, on this very topic, Best Free Tools for vSphere. Uh, I'm the creator of the vSphere 5 video training course uh, from TrainSignal. And prior to this, I was a customer uh, in the real world where we implemented uh, VMware uh, vSphere and, and did a virtualization consolidation project. Uh, and that's really where I gained my passion for virtualization. Kenny? And my name is Kendrick Coleman. I'm also a V-expert, and I have a list of accreditations to go along with it. I'm working on my VCP5 also as we, see, as we speak. I'm a blogger at KendrickColeman.com, and you can find me and reach me there for any kind of tips, tricks, tutorials, and walkthroughs, or any kind of hacks that I find is a day-to-day -day, uh, playing around with inside the vSphere environment. In my background, I come as a network engineer, and that really led me to becoming a, a virtualization evangelist. I've spent a lot of years now playing with VMware, and it's it's definitely where we all sort of see that that gradual progression of our data centers. Currently, right now, I'm a corporate re-architect at VCE. Uh, my role is to help test solutions, talk to customers about VCE and vBlocks, and how we can run vSphere better on vBlocks. But today, we're here to talk about the best free tools, and let's get it going right now. We'll, we'll talk about sort of how we came about this. David? Uh, Kendra Coleman and I first spoke at VMworld 2010. Uh, we did uh, North America and Europe, where we talked about you know the best free tools for vSphere. Um, we did the presentation a number of times, and thankfully we were asked to come back to VMworld 2011. Um, we've got a lot of great tools, and you know since we first started giving this presentation, it's it's evolved over time because you know older tools have gone away or been discontinued, and then new free tools have come out. So. Uh, for me personally, that's why it's been you know one of the most exciting topics to talk about because there's always some new tool uh, that some vendor, uh, especially VMware Labs, uh, as of late, uh, has been announcing for us to play with and test. Uh, so one of the things we try to answer for each of the free tools is does it work with free EFXI hypervisor and does it work with vSphere 5? So that's all our uh, free tools uh, VMworld tour information here. And so let's move on. 
and answer the question, why do we need more tools to begin with? I mean, the VMware uh, vSphere client uh, has a lot of functionality. You know, it helps us to monitor the virtual infrastructure. We can create alarms. We can create performance charts. Uh, vCenter does a lot of great things. Um, but, you know, you have to say that that's not a one-size-fits-all tool. You know, there's still room for more, uh, more tools to step in and help us uh, to do our jobs better. And I, you know, kind of think of this like Batman. He doesn't have just one tool on his tool belt. He's got multiple tools. He's got a different tool, you know, for every job. And that's why I really like these free tools because, you know, someone always creates some new gadget to help us uh, do our job better as VMware admins. So where do these free tools come from? Where do we get these tools? You know, who, who's out there just writing free tools? Um, there's a lot of different sources. You know, there's VMware. They're creating free tools to enhance vSphere's usefulness and, and make it easier to use. Um, they're also creating tools through their VMware Labs website so that, you know, we can sort of be uh, beta testers for new uh, enhancements and ideas that they'd like to create. There's independent developers out there, guys who just, you know, want to get noticed. They want to contribute something to the community and help other people out. Maybe they have a script that they use in their infrastructure and they want to contribute it, and then from there it evolves into a, a new tool. There's large VMware partner companies, you know, companies like Veeam and Vision Core who create free tools, uh, and they, of course, you know, use those free tools to get leads to hopefully sell commercial tools. And then there's small startup software companies. You know, software companies uh, could be just one guy who starts a software company, creates a free tool, uh, hopes to get noticed or, or maybe bought out, but in the meantime, he offers, you know, excellent tools for us as VMware admins to, to use in our infrastructure. So we'll jump right into it, and we'll start talking about our first free tool. And this one actually comes from Ricky El Kazam. Uh, actually, I forgot to change the slide. He no longer works for Veeam. He actually just changed jobs recently. And he's now a, a senior, um, I, be, I believe it's an enterprise uh, sales consultant for Liquid or Labs. But he runs a blog that's over at virtualizedplanet.com. And we're going to look at one of these, the first free tools that, that really he came out with, and I thought it really stood out, and it's called the vCenter plugin. Now, this is a benefit to you because a lot of us have other tools out there that are very, very much web-based, whether it's for your SAN or if it's for your management components, and this is a way to actually be able to consolidate all those management views into a single view with inside the actual uh, vCenter server inside the vSphere client itself. It 90% works with vSphere 5 right now. He's talking before, and he's going to be able to get it working completely with vSphere 5. Uh, but we're going to take a look at it, and this is actually a video of it running in my lab at home. So this is sort of the, the screen you would see. You would type in your web page for a plugin, and I'm actually going to be pointing to my Synology NAS at home. Now, take, of course, that this can also be uh, an intranet web page. It could be Google. It could be really anything that has a web address associated with it. And I can also pick where I want to actually see the plugin tab with inside vCenter itself. And we're going to see here in a second, I'm actually going to be saving this uh, to my localized desktop. And there's two different ways you can do this. You can actually do it for a personalized view or you can do it for a global view. A personalized view is when I need to open up my vSphere client, it's only going to show for me. If I do it in a global view, anybody that logs into the vCenter will actually see this with inside their vCenter, or sorry, with inside their vSphere client. So now when I open up my vSphere client, I can go to my host and clusters view and actually just registered a new tab within, within to vCenter within inside my vSphere client so I can actually access my NAS and from, from within here. So I'm really consolidating those management views. Again, think about this for anything else that you have to do with management, whether it's for vCloud Director, it could be for uh, vCenter Ops, it could be for any, any of those other management tools or anything that really has a web address that you want to be able to see with inside here. It's definitely a really cool tool that you could really start thinking out of the box of how would you, how would you use this within your infrastructure because I'm sure everybody has a different way they could actually use it. Now, David, I know you wrote an article a little while ago about being able to use something similar to this. Yeah, I wrote an article for uh, virtualizationreview.com where I talked about um, actually using this plugin to surf the web. I think it had a crazy title like surfing the web with the vSphere client um, because it's actually pretty cool. You can, you know, create a tab and that tab can just go to, let's say, google.com and then from there you can actually surf the web inside the vSphere client thanks to this plugin. 
Now, I should point out that you don't have, um, you know, web browser plugins, and it's a little difficult to navigate because you don't have a back button and bookmarks and so forth. Uh, but it, it is a very useful tool. And, uh, you know, Kenny, I recently got a Synology NAS myself, and now I'm going to have to, you know, set up the administration page for my Synology NAS uh, using this vSphere plugin. So, uh, cool video. So now let's move on and talk about the vSphere client for iPad. Um, I think this is one of the free tools that has the greatest wow factor. You know, anytime somebody talks about an iPad, for some reason, people start to get excited. Um, and I should point out that this tool comes from uh, VMware Labs. And uh, just a little background first on VMware Labs. Um, their website is labs.vmware.com. And this is actually a website that VMware created uh, to display pet projects that their engineers create which they call flings. So these are just kind of part-time temporary projects they throw out on this website. Um, there is no support for the projects, um, but the projects are very useful, and you know, the engineers really want to get our feedback. They want us to test them and you know see what we think. They provide basic documentation, and the vSphere client for iPad um, is related to one of these flings. Now, I should point out the vSphere client for iPad is actually an application that you download from the iTunes App Store. Um, but in order to be able to use it and actually administer your virtual infrastructure using an iPad, you have to download a VMware Fling. And that VMware Fling is uh, vCenter Mobile Access. And vCenter Mobile Access is really a um, virtual machine that you import into your virtual infrastructure. And it gives you a, a mobile web interface um, for managing uh, your virtual infrastructure. So you can actually uh, go to the web page for vCenter Mobile Access, and um, you could use a, you know, even a basic smartphone or BlackBerry or whatever to, uh, to administer the virtual infrastructure through vCenter Mobile Access. But in order to use the vCenter client for iPad, you have to have vCenter Mobile Access um, installed and up and running, because that's what it's talking to uh, in order to do its thing. So the theory here, of course, with the vCenter client for iPad is you, know, you can free yourself from your desk, access the virtual infrastructure anywhere, uh, it's a step in the future. It does work with vSphere 5. And uh, if you want to go to the next slide, Kenny, I did actually um, I have a lot of screenshots here. And the screenshots show us, you know, using the vSphere client for iPad, you can see uh, what hosts you have out there in the virtual infrastructure, how many virtual machines are running on those hosts, the type of host, the version of ESX or ESXi they're running, uh, the amount of hardware they have, how many virtual machines they have, the status of those virtual machines. You can even look into performance charts and graphs and see, you know, how much CPU, memory, disk, and network are being used um, on the host or on the virtual machine. And you can do basic troubleshooting with ping or trace route commands. Um, one of the new features that they recently added um, in the vSphere client for iPad on the latest version uh, is that you can actually do a vMotion. So if you go out there and you download the latest vSphere client for iPad, you'll get that new feature automatically, or if you just update the application that you might have already installed. Uh, let's see, if you go to the next slide, Kenny, I think we have some more information on the vSphere client for iPad. The new version, uh, like I said, allows you to migrate virtual machines with vMotion, uh, and it's really cool how you can just do a two-finger uh, drag from one host to the other. Uh, it'll email you vMotion validation errors. You can view task progress reports on the virtual machine cards. Um, and it also supports, um, of course, vSphere 5. I've actually got a video out there on my blog, uh, vmwarevideos.com, where I show you how to download and install vCenter Mobile Access and then use it to uh, connect your vSphere client for iPad and administer your virtual infrastructure. Everybody's been pretty pretty impressed with the vSphere iPad client, and I can say that, that I have too, and I know that VMware's putting in a lot of efforts to keep development on this because it's really, as David said, it's giving me the next, next little small wave of administration by having that mobile access from anywhere for your infrastructure. So I think we could also see being able to open up a console connection from the vSphere iPad client coming in the future as well, which would also be pretty cool. And next, we're going to talk about another VMware Labs project it's called Boomerang. Now, Boomerang is really for, they want to gear towards VDI because they, this is supposed to be a very quick virtual machine, virtual machine administration without actually having to go to vCenter. And what this allows you to do is it will bring up a menu where you can actually have a list of all the virtual machines within your inventory 
and you can say that you know if you have a VDI environment, you know that Joe, Sally, and Susie are, are the biggest problem childs within your environment. So whenever you actually need to access their desktops, you can actually just do it straight from here. Now, the great thing about here is that when you do this, it actually brings up a complete console connection to their machine. But I'll show you real quick being able to set it up. You're actually going to add in your virtual center server, and from here, you can actually do the login portion by either saving credentials or having to type in every single time. For here, I'm going to show you just I want to always save my credentials because I don't like security within my uh, environment. But since it's a home lab. But from here, I can actually choose my favorite VMs, the ones that I always need to access. So I can click stars and actually move them to the top of the menu. Now, once they're at the top of the menu, I can actually just go up there and I can open a console session to it every single time. Now, the great thing about this is we need to think about it for a, a VDI environment. I don't need to worry about you know, connecting to their machine via RDP because RDP will kick their screen off. I don't have to worry about using VNC because there's always holes with using VNC uh, within an enterprise. So this actually gives me a direct console access to their virtual desktop without ever actually having to use any sort of protocol to actually get there. So if we need to see and say there's we need to troubleshoot a problem that they're doing, I could sit here and actually watch their mouse clicks go back and forth and I could say, well, this is what you're doing wrong or this is how you should be doing it. Uh, so it's a great way for admins within, a, within VDI to actually uh, access those desktops a lot faster. Yeah, I really love the VMware Boomerang client, and I, I think and I hope that that's one of the features we'll see you know, in upcoming versions of vSphere. Another one of the features that I'd really like to see incorporated from VMware Labs into vSphere in the future um, are the features that you'll find in VMware Guest Console. So they call it VGC, and it's from, again, labs.vmware.com. Um, and this is really a virtual machine administration tool. What it does is it allows you to do mass administration of your virtual machine and access the guest files and processes running uh, in the virtual disk inside each virtual machine. It is compatible with vSphere 5, but it doesn't work with free ESXi. So uh, we actually have a video demo here of uh, VMware Guest Console. This is one of the first tools we talked about really from VMware Labs, and um, it's actually, I think, one of the most useful tools still today, even though it's been around for a while. So as you can see here, we log into uh, the VMware Labs web, actually we log into our vCenter server uh, with the VMware Guest Console. And then from there, what you do is you can log in um, individual virtual machines or virtual machines in mass. So you could have your Windows administrative credentials or Linux you know, root credentials where you log into all your virtual machines. From there, you gain access to the files and processes that are running inside through this client. So here you can see you know, which virtual machines are powered on. Uh, you can sort those. Uh, you can look at processes running across all the virtual machines in the infrastructure. And to me, that's one of the coolest things is you, know, you can see, OK, how many uh, Word.exe executables are, are running across all the virtual machines. I think it would be really great for VDI. So here we go into a virtual machine um, actual console. You can go into the console of the virtual machine so you can manage the virtual machine, let's say, without you know, RDPing directly to them. Um, you can even go in and you can um, manage hosts and, and get basic reporting information here. So let's say that we go into a virtual machine and uh, we actually create a temp directory in there through the VMware guest console. So we can actually um, explore the files. And then what we want to do here is we want to deploy a bat file and actually uh, execute this bat file um, inside the virtual machine. So we can do this not just to a single virtual machine, but actually the multiple you know, virtual machines in mass if we wanted to execute uh, some bat file across all the virtual infrastructure's virtual machines. So there you see that the calculator has started, which is what the bat file was instructed to do. Uh, we didn't actually go into the virtual machine and execute that. We deployed that bat file and uh, had it automatically executed. So now we can actually go in and we can manage this process that we've started um, through VMware Guest Console. So you see here the bat file that was uh, put on the local hard drive. Uh, we can, of course, uh, go in and we can even kill that uh, calc.exe um, executable that was started. Um, you can also manage snapshots across the entire you know, virtual infrastructure. So you can see what snapshots are 
uh, created across all your virtual machines. Um, there's just a lot that you can do with this. And I know, Kenny, you had a, uh, a real-world example of how you use this tool. Yeah, so this was back when I was uh, working as a vSphere administrator, and I believe it was from the upgrade of 4.0 to 4.1. As, as we all know, when you upgrade the underlying hypervisor, there's always a VMware tools upgrade that's also associated with it. So when I actually had to go and start upgrading all the, all the Windows machines within my infrastructure, I could never get just a simple upgrade to actually have with VMware tools. A quick Google search showed me that I actually needed to delete an old binary from the actual virtual machine, and then after I deleted that binary, I could go ahead and I could just re reinstall VMware tools with the new version. Well, I kind of thought to myself, you know, if I have, you know, 500 or 1,000 or 10,000 virtual machines, that's not going to be the most efficient way to do it. Of course, I, I don't know jack about PowerCLI and PowerShell, so I, I didn't want to script it. And at the same time, if you have Linux hosts, that's really not going to work for you as well. And VGC kind of caught my eye, and I thought to myself, well, this is, this is definitely a use case for me. So for the Windows world, what I did is I created a simple batch file where I would actually run the batch file from VGC, delete the binary, and then actually have the batch file delete itself. And I was actually able to do it across uh, 50 VMs within a matter of about two and a half minutes. So it definitely has real-world capabilities where you can actually use it because that, that's, that's really the, the easiest way that I've found to be able to do some mass administration. And I would encourage anybody to actually Google this for YouTube, just VMware Guest Console on YouTube, because there's actually two 10-minute videos of absolutely everything you can do in here. Uh, we didn't really do it justice, but we just kind of did a, a quick and dirty demo of what is possible in here. But give it, a, give it a try and give it a shot because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see what you can do in here. And I think we could probably see some of this stuff get integrated into the vSphere client as we move forward. Another fling that also comes from VMware Labs is something called Cloud Cleaner. Now, I don't know if you started playing with vCloud Director, but vCloud Director has sort of become my, I guess you could say, namesake now. It's what I play with day in and day out. And when I actually have to play with an environment, mess with it, tear it up, tear it down, there's always a chance that when you remove something from vCloud Director, you don't you know, necessarily just delete it cleanly. Uh, there's going to be things that are left over. This is a great free tool that actually comes from VMware Labs. It's called Cloud Cleaner, and what it will do is it actually will see anything and everything that was left over from a vCloud installation, and it will go and delete all those bits. So if you still have the, the vCloud agent installed on the host, if you have resource pools, folders, virtual machines, port groups, it will actually go ahead and delete all those within a vSphere environment. I wouldn't try to run this within a production environment, but it's definitely great if you have a test and dev environment that you need to run vCloud Director. And it's also great if you just want to start learning vCloud Director, but need to tear it up and tear it down multiple times and actually until you do it right. Another one of my favorite things is called Project Onyx. So uh, Project Onyx is actually really interesting, especially if you're uh, wanting to learn PowerCLI. So um, Project Onyx is uh, really a, a proxy. It goes between your vSphere client and your vCenter server. And so what you do is you bring up this uh, proxy, this Project Onyx proxy, and um, it actually points um, to your, your vSphere client. And um, then everything you do in your vSphere client is actually shown in the Project Onyx screen here. So everything you do as a VMware admin the PowerCLI uh, script for that is actually generated and shown here on the Project Onyx console. So the great thing about that is you can just copy these scripts and paste them you know, over into the Power GUI, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, and there you go. You've got some powerful scripts that you didn't uh, have to you know, figure out how to create. So this can show you how to create you know, very complex scripts based on things that you do every day. Another tool from VMware Labs is called vCenter XVP Manager. And I mean, to me, the, uh, the name should just be vCenter Hyper-V Manager because and that's really what it does, is it's an um, add-in um, for vCenter that allows you to uh, basically view what's going on over on your Hyper-V infrastructure. And it wasn't really created by VMware, uh, at least in my opinion, to manage Hyper-V infrastructures for the long term. Uh, you know, VMware doesn't want you to keep your Hyper-V infrastructure there for the long term. Uh, what it's designed for is so that you can see what Hyper-V hosts you have, 
what virtual machines are running on those Hyper-V servers, and then it integrates very well. In fact, there's a big button there to convert those Hyper-V virtual machines um, into your vSphere virtual infrastructure. But I mean, still, even if you, you kept your Hyper-V server and virtual machines around uh, for, you know, forever indefinitely, you've got this insight. Uh, you've got a single um, console where you can view your, your host and virtual machines for both vSphere and for Hyper-V. So now let's move on. Let's talk about vMonitor. Yeah, vMonitor is actually good. It's going to be our first tool that we're going to look, look for that actually comes from a, a company that actually sells products too. As David said before, our, the goal of our, our presentation is to give you 100% legitimate free tools, right? Nothing we're going to show you has 30-day licenses or 60-day uh, time bombs involved or anything like that. These are just completely free, free to use, and uh, so definitely take advantage of everything we show you. But the first one does come from Veeam. They're very well known for their backup and replication software, but they also have a commercial product called Veeam Monitor, but they also have a free version of it as well. So we'll take a look at what it, what it actually looks like when you're monitoring your virtualized infrastructure. So what you would do is you actually just import or connect it to your vCenter server. And from here, you can see at the top, there's a lot of information that it grabs from the vCenter APIs. We can see at the top, we can see all these, all these statistics and different tabs for CPU, memory, disk, network, swap. Um, so the good thing I like is actually seeing the swap because if you actually have swap happening within your infrastructure, you know it's a bad thing. And this top VMs is probably my other favorite tab because it's a way for you to see the top five or the top three or the top ten uh, problem childs or problem VMs within your infrastructure. So you can actually see who's using the most memory, who's using the most swap, who's using the most network uh, bandwidth. So it's, it's a great way for you to have uh, higher visibility into something that you just can't see when you look inside the vSphere client directly at vCenter. It has a really... Uh, it's really pleasing to the eye because you sort of have this stoplight approach with red, red, uh, yellow, and green. So you sort of see what your hosts look like, what your VMs look like, and you can keep drilling down. So you can actually see what all these tabs look like for a single resource pool. You can see what they look like for a host. You can see what they look like for an individual VM. Uh, you can also see it at the complete data center layer. Uh, if you drill down to the VM, you can also see how we had in VGC, they have these processes. Now, within here, you can actually kill them, but you can't see the processes, and that's sort of the bad thing about the free version. But it's something that you can actually still have a little bit more insight with it, but I wouldn't recommend you start killing processes from within inside here when you actually can't see what processes are really running. Yeah, Veeam has been very generous over the years, you know, with their free tools offering. Um, besides Veeam Monitor, they've got Veeam Reporter, Veeam Fast SCP, Veeam Business View, um, and other free tools that they offer uh, to anyone. Um, Veeam Reporter, just a, a second on these tools, if you aren't familiar with them, um, is a reporting tool. It's great for, um, I think, disaster recovery documentation or if you're a consultant or you just want to track changes over time, you can see what's been going on in the virtual infrastructure. It creates some very nice reports. Uh, Fast FTP, of course, is a FTP client that understands uh, VMware ESXi hosts and vCenter. And, you know, it's a great way to transfer virtual machines back and forth, let's say, from your local computer running workstation up to your vSphere servers. Um, you could also use it to transfer ISOs and create an ISO library up there on one of your data stores. Business View is actually a tool that um, allows you to uh, create uh, categories and, and really track your virtual infrastructure the way your business is designed. For example, instead of having you know, vCenter data centers and folders and resource pools, you can create actual business units and uh, departments and, and so forth and, and track uh, your business uh, using reporter and monitor using the categories that you created in business view. And a really generous gift that Veeam has uh, recently given everyone is if you have a, a VMware certified professional certification, you can get free licenses of uh, Veeam Backup and Veeam Monitor uh, the, the full commercial edition for, I believe, it's two, um, two sockets. Uh, you can get free licenses for those to use in your lab um, indefinitely. So if you haven't done that you know, and you have a VCP, go and check it out. Another free tool that I'd like to talk about is called RV Tools. And this actually comes from an independent developer, not some big company. Um, the name, his name is Rob Day 
Arvey. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but I'm guessing that's where the name RV comes from, uh, or the letters RV come from in RV Tools. So his website is robware.net, and uh, this is a reporting and inventory tool. And it's, it's a really small, uh, seems like a simple tool. Um, you run it, and you connect it to your vCenter server. And the first time I ran it, I said, wow, this is like tab heaven. It's, it's like looking at Excel, there's a tab for every possible virtual infrastructure resource you can think of. And from there, you know, you can actually click to sort and filter uh, within those tabs. It's got some killer exports to Excel. Most of it works with vTier 5, and it is compatible with free ESXi. So we've got a video here on how it works. You can see here we're connecting to a vCenter host. And the data that it downloads right at the start is all the data that it has access to. So it's not a real-time reporting tool, but it's an excellent tool, I think, for you know, documenting um, your virtual infrastructure. I think it would be great for consultants. Here you see uh, we've got information on um, uh, all the, uh, the devices in our virtual infrastructure. We can see the status of our host, how many CPUs they have, how much memory they have, mix, uh, how many virtual disks or uh, data stores they have, um, all sorts of information here. You can click on the top columns and you can sort this information, the information on you know, fault tolerance status and so forth, the actual path to uh, the data stores. Uh, and there's even some basic uh, performance information in here, you know, not just the amount of memory uh, that the host or virtual machine has configured, but the amount that's in use. Here's information on vCPUs, you know, so here we just sorted uh, which virtual machine has the most number of virtual CPUs. Uh, you can do that simply by clicking on the uh, column header there. And then in the virtual memory tab, you can see um, which virtual machine has the most memory configured. You know, you want to find out where these resource hogs are, and you can do it for free and quickly, you know, with uh, RV tools. So here we can go into the virtual disk. We can see, you know, the capacity of the virtual disk, um, how much is assigned to each virtual machine, see which virtual machines have uh, virtual CD drives connected to them. Um, you can see that, you know, directly from here, snapshot information, which uh, virtual machines have the VMware tools installed, if those tools are up to date, the version of the VMware tools, um, so you can very quickly report on all that. Uh, information on your host here, how many cores they have, how much memory they have, how much memory is in use. Um, their uh, EVC information, you know, last boot time. Um, there's uh, virtual NIC information, um, MAC addresses, uh, speed, duplex. You know, do you have a duplex mis mix match, mismatch? You can see that, you know, directly from here. And then here we've got information on, uh, you know, our, our data stores, and uh, status of those data stores, type of data store, NFS, VMFS, you know, a version of the data store. You know, when you move to vTier 5, you need to upgrade your VMFS data stores. Well, you can see that directly from here. And then here's where we can go and we can export this information to Excel. So uh, just in a couple clicks there, we're bringing up everything that was in those tabs now here in Excel. So uh, now that we've got it in Excel, we can go through here and we can you know, manipulate that data however we want. We can archive it so that we can, you know, do a, a point in time capture of what's going on and compare, you know, last month's information to this month's information to see if anything has changed. So, um, again, a great free tool from uh, RV Tools and uh, Robware.net. So with that, let's yeah, it's on. definitely a very powerful tool. It's a pretty powerful tool, but. Next, we're going to talk about another company, and it's called VM Turbo. Uh, VM Turbo made a huge splash this year, and they they kind of had a, a, a crazy product last year because they had a bunch of free different tools. They had Watchdog, they had Reporter, they had a, a, a bunch of different tools, and they kind of looked back and they said, you know, we need to start consolidating, and start thinking about how we can approach this correctly. So now they have a single tool that they use, and it's called just VM Turbo, and there's three different editions. There's the Cloud Edition, the Enterprise Edition, and you also have the Community Edition. And the Community Edition is a free version of the tool. Now, we're going to go and look at a quick, a quick video of all the different features that you can get inside here, and I think you'll be quite impressed by everything that is actually in the, whoops, apologize, everything that's actually in the Cloud and the, the Enterprise version, you can actually get with inside the free tool. So as we can see here, this is what the dashboard looks like. Um, it goes a little bit beyond a stoplight approach, so it has a few different colors in there, so you can see between uh, green to red. 
but you can actually keep drilling down into different things. Right here, we're going to drill down into our host, and we can actually go back in time and see what utilization looked like over time. We can see what the actual ESX top CPU ready statistics are. So and there's not a lot of companies where you actually get that level of data. You can actually drill down into the graphs right there, as I showed, of individual VMs. So you can actually see what performance of the individual VMs look like. Now, from here back to this menu, we can actually start drilling down into data stores. So we can actually see what the performance or what the health of a data store looks like. We can see how many IOPS it's pushing. We can see what sort of latency it's pushing. We can actually drill and we can see all the, all the virtual machines that are actually hosted on that data store and then see IO statistics, latency statistics for that individual VM itself. So as you can see right here, we can see IOPS, we can see latency, we can see how much the, the percentage of memory and CPU it's been using on the host. Um, and then we can actually drill down uh, even further to see other virtual machines that are on different hosts. So there's actually a lot of stuff that you can see in here. We can actually go to the planning tab, uh, and we can go to the optimization tab, where you can even just get the planning tab is really supposed to be for maybe a little bit of a what-if scenario. It's sort of supposed to be a, a way that you can start seeing the, the gradual progression of your virtual environment. And do I need to purchase more of a certain resource? Uh, and then for here in the utilization, we can see maybe what the utilization of IOPS or latency or how much storage are these actual individual NFS or VMFS data stores actually taking up. Now, one of the cool things that I like is this uh, reports button. And so this is where the, the, the actual reports actually got uh, sucked into this product is that you're going to be able to get, I think it's anywhere between 30 or 40 um, reports just out of, the block, out of the box in here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring up a uh, report of IOPS uh, for all the data stores within my infrastructure. So think about this, if you have a DBA or somebody that just needs to know everything about their VM or their data store or uh, anything within the infrastructure, you, can, you, you, know, you know the people you work with, you know that the kind of reports they want. So as you can see here, this is the AD server. So if you have a specific person that's responsible for a server, you can actually set this up to send them a nine-page report every morning of, what their virtual machine looked like for the previous day. You can see how much utilization they used, what kind of IOPS they were running. Uh, it's definitely a, a very, very powerful free reporting tool. Uh, so it's definitely something worth checking out. Yeah, I really like how VM Turbo is actually deployed as a virtual appliance. You know, so you don't have to blow a, a Windows license, and you don't have to uh, you know do any sort of Windows installation or install a SQL Server database or anything. It's it's all fully contained in the virtual appliance that you download. So. Cool stuff. So let's move on. Let's talk about uh, Extrovert's V-Alarm and other tools from Extrovert. Um, Extrovert is a website out of the UK, uh, extrovert.com. And these are just a, a group of you know smart guys that got together. They made a quality website. Uh, there's a, a lot of white papers and how-to guides. And I do know that they do consulting because uh, a well-known blogger and V-expert, uh, Greg Robertson, out of the UK, recently joined them. He told me in a consulting role. So they do virtualization consulting. Um, and they've got some interesting free tools. And the first one I want to talk about is V-Alarm. So V-Alarm is a uh, desktop uh, tool that you install in Windows. It runs down in your task tray there. And basically, you know, it's really simple. All it does is it connects to the vCenter server. And if there's any alarms of any kind in the virtual infrastructure, a little balloon message pops up. says how many alarms you have. You can click on it. And then it gives you information about the alarms. So here's a, just a test alarm that I created uh, to go off. Uh, but the thing I like about this is, you know, in, in vCenter, if you want email alarms to be sent to you, you really have to go in and analyze each one of the different alarms, and you have to configure the SMTP settings and configure the action to send you an email, and it can take a lot of time to set that up properly. Well, here, you just install a Windows tool, a balloon pops up every time, um, you know, there's some sort of alarm. So I think it's a great free tool, you know, from the guys at Extrovert. Another one is the Extrovert RDP client plugin. So this is, uh, again, a super small, it's a tiny 1.9 megabyte installation file. And what it does is it uh, works with vSphere 5 and Windows 7. And when you're running the vSphere client, after you, after you have installed this, if you right click on a virtual machine, you'll see a new button down there that says connect via RDP. So instead of you having to go down and run 
the uh, terminal services, you know, desktop connection client um, inside Windows uh, and actually get the domain name or IP address for the virtual machine, you just right click on the virtual machine, you just right click on the virtual machine, you click connect via RDP and log in. So it'll save you some time. And the next one we're going to talk about is Zangati. And Zangati has been something that they, they, made a, they made a big wave last year, and they were definitely a big hit at VMworld this past year. Um, their, their main goal is for performance analysts, and that's what you're going to see. And they take a different approach to doing, doing their, their analytics, and it's because it's a very, very much a network-focused um, product. They, they think most of the problems they see in a virtualized infrastructure either come from network bandwidth contention or storage bandwidth contention. And we're going to see a lot of the features that are in here that are very, very unique to Zangati, such as the performance health engine. This is something that sort of vCenter operations, which was an acquisition from Integrin, sort of sparked, right? The, that, that performance health engine is a way for you to take a baseline of what your infrastructure looks like, and if it deviates from there, you're going to sort of see on a relation on a scale from 0 to 100 how it actually looks. They have a DVR like monitoring tool we're going to see within the free version. They have a top talkers uh, and it also does work with, free v, with vSphere 5 and for ESXi. Now one thing to note is that the licensing for this is actually on a per host basis. So you get one, one Zangati for ESX interface per ESXi host. And it's not saying you can't put one on every single host, but if you want a aggregated view of everything, you actually have to buy the commercial product. But for actually having to drill down on a host, it's actually a very powerful product because uh, what we're going to talk about here is with the DVR monitoring. So as we can see, it's actually a very pretty interface because we can drill down into little bytes and bits of what kind of storage is happening on a particular VM, whether it's going from... Uh, the VM out to another VM, whether it's going from the host to the storage, there's a lot of different things that you can see. Uh, they have three different interfaces within this free product. You have the VDI interface, which is what we're looking at now. They also have the VI interface, which we'll look at, and they actually have the classic interface. So what I'm showing you right here is the actual DVR like monitoring, how I can go back and forth in time and actually see what something looked like on a per second basis. There's about a one minute delay of when data actually feeds into here. So think about if you're an administrator and you know that at 2 a.m. every night there is some spike happening and you don't know why, how, why or where it's happening and you just really need to figure out what's going on. Well, the last thing you want to do is actually sit up at 2 o'clock in the morning and wait for this, uh, this spike to happen. So the easiest thing for you to do is to actually just set up a recording. And then the next day, you can actually just go and you can view that recording. The recordings can be an hour long. So you can actually go and you can see what was happening in that point of time, and you can actually just drill down into that particular problem. Uh, now we're looking at the classic interface. This classic interface really shows this top 10 talkers uh, mentality. So the free version has this top 10 talkers where you see the top 10 of everything. So instead of being able to see uh, everything, so you don't see all your VMs, but you see the top 10 VMs, that are responsible for CPU usage or network bandwidth. So you really, that's the important part is because you actually want to see everything that uh, is actually utilizing the most of something. You really don't care about your, your low hanging fruit per se. So this is definitely a really unique product because you can actually set up alarms, you can send recordings to individual people through email. Um, it's, it's definitely really cool and it's, it's one of the new ones that are out there on the market and with their latest features, they actually have a, a big data store focus. So you can actually see what IP bit rates are actually going uh, between NFS uh, and IP-based storage data stores um, with fiber channel included. You can also see hosted data store path latency. So as you know, if you have round robin or you have multiple paths to get to a data store, if there's certain, uh, I guess you could say latency going between one path, it's going to be able to let you see and visualize that of what's actually happening. Uh, they also have WMI integration for Windows. You can actually see processes running with inside the VM. And they also started including CPU ready and memory ballooning statistics from the ESXi host itself. So definitely a very powerful product for something that's free. Yeah, I really love Zangati um, out of all you know, the free tools. 
it's, uh, you know, the cool thing about it to me is that it'll actually show you what's going on in the virtual network, something that you're never going to see in the vSphere client, at least today. Uh, you can see who's talking to who and what are they talking about. Uh, it, it deploys as a virtual appliance, and hey, you know, it's a free tool. So with that, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, free tools from vKernel. And vKernel is actually one of the companies out here, or really the company out here, that has the most number or the greatest quantity of free tools. They've been doing this for a long time. Uh, many of their free tools are you know, very small tools that might just perform one function, but they're also very useful tools. Um, yes, they are there to you know, sort of get your, your email address and you know, maybe market the larger tool that they sell to you, but I have to give it to them that their free tools are extremely useful. So uh, one of the free tools you know, that you see here is actually their uh, storage view. So this storage view in the graphic shows you information about data store latency. And it's pretty hard to go in and, and you know, look up data store latency in the virtual infrastructure with the vSphere client. Here you just you know, double click a little Windows install and there you go. It tells you which data store has the highest latency. Um, and then you, know, you can go check it out and figure out what's going on on that data store. So besides their you know, storage view, they've got capacity view, um, application view. I really like their capacity modeler. It's a virtual machine that you import into the virtual infrastructure. It has a web interface. And then it allows you to do all these what if scenarios. So you can say, OK, I've got this many hosts and, and this much storage and this many virtual machines right now. But you know, let's say that I needed to add another 100 virtual machines. You know, how many more hosts would I, need to would I need to have in my virtual infrastructure? Or what if I added you know, five more hosts with 32 gigs each? You know, how many more virtual machines could I get then? And, and what's the, uh, the biggest bottleneck? You know, is it the storage? Is it the, is it the CPU? Is it the memory? So I like Capacity Modeler. I also like Search My VM. It gives you a, a Google-like interface uh, you know, for your virtual infrastructure. So you can do searches and you could open it up to you know, other people in the IT department to go in there and uh, do searches on the virtual infrastructure, see how many virtual machines you have, or you know, do wildcard searches. Then they've got a new free tool called vScope, which is kind of a heat map, really, uh, for the virtual infrastructure. It imports as a virtual appliance and you access the web page and then you can see um, which virtual machines are you know, yellow, red, and green. And the red ones are the, obviously the ones you really need to check out that are having some sort of performance issues. And one of the final tools we're going to talk about is something that uh, a lot of people have started really utilizing a lot in the past year or two. And when I did a blog post about the top 10 tools for 2011, I called this the, the Voltron of the free tools, right? Because it's really three three different tools that you have to really combine into one to make them work and that would really makes it so powerful. And that's a combination of Power CLI, Power GUI, and the vSphere Community Power Pack. Um, the Power CLI is something that actually comes from VMware. It's your interface for PowerShell. The Power GUI is the actual user interface to actually create new scripts and be able to save scripts and be able to implement them into this VMware Community Power Pack that's basically just a I think it's over two or three hundred different scripts that you can use to administer your virtual environment and to begin to change things. So one thing that really that you need to know is that this is really for everything. It's for reporting. It's for administration. Really, Power GUI helps anybody from a beginner to an advanced administrator. And this is really what we're going to say is going to be really the future of administration because the vSphere client wasn't built for mass virtual machine administration. So when you can actually script it, you can get it done a lot faster and a lot easier. And we're going to kind of look through real quick of what this would actually look like, how I can, right now I'm connecting to my host, and when I go into my host, I can see all the virtual machines that are in there. I can actually drill into a virtual machine, I can take a snapshot, I can be motion it, I can create a new CD drive, I can stop, start, reboot it, shut down, I can modify it. Um, I can actually report all this stuff too. So there's a lot of different things I can do. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a test snapshot from here. Now the good thing about this is, you know, you can create a snapshot from one virtual machine inside the vSphere client. That's not very hard. But what if you need to do something, if it's Windows 2008 R2 Service Pack, you know, 1 or 2, whatever's going to come out next, and you have to deploy that one night to... 50 different virtual machines. Well, you don't want to sit there and you don't want to just deploy it without properly testing it, or maybe you want to snapshot your VMs first. So within here, you can actually highlight all the VMs you want, 
and do mass snapshotting. So you can just knock out all 50 at once. Now at the very top you can see I can actually right click on the top, the top bar and actually see more, more details of anything that's in there, whether it's a virtual machine, whether it's a host, whether it's a, a data store or a network pool. And from here, I can actually create reports. So as I can see right here, I drill down into a single host, and I can see all the virtual machines that are running on that host, and I can get details for every single one. So I can get details for the networking as well. I can see all the virtual machines that are actually running on a specific port group. And those are actually all the, the, you know, there's a ton of scripts that actually just come there with, the, with Power GUI out of the box. Now, the good thing is that with that, you actually have this VMware Community Power Pack as well. Now, the VMware Community Power Pack actually has a bunch of different scripts that adds with it. These are scripts that come from uh, Alan Renouf, uh, Luke Deckens, a lot of people that, that dedicate their time just to putting up just, just fun stuff for anybody to use. Um, we'll, we'll look through and see some of our favorite scripts. Some of them uh, are going to be for, within 4.1, one of the really cool ones was for HA purposes. As we all know, uh, that kind of changed at least for 5 with the new uh, fault domain management and how they kind of rewrote HA. But HA in the sense of vSphere 4, they are actually able to go through and see what were primary nodes and what were secondary nodes. You can actually drill through and see CPU ready times for all the virtual machines within your cluster. So that's actually a very powerful thing too without really having to know how well ESX top works. If you can get that CPU ready statistic, because that's, that's definitely a, one that everybody always looks at when they need to troubleshoot an environment. Now all these scripts in here, you can edit everything to actually customize it for your environment because PowerGUI comes with a script editor, so if you want to create your own scripts or you want to edit the scripts that are already there, all this stuff is available for you, so you can use the commandlets right out of the box without actually having to do, um, you know, it needs actually a gradual way to start learning this stuff without having to be bombarded with a lot of information at first. But it's definitely a lot of stuff, as we can see. It's really going to be the, the future wave of administration for mass VM administration when we're starting to consolidate more and more workloads. Now we have some bonus tools we want to talk about, and the first one comes from William Lamb. He now works at VMware, but he keeps on updating a lot of stuff on here that uh, is great because he's, he's very much into Perl, and he has this called the VGetto script repository. And of course, that's probably not the most uh, PC thing to call it, but uh, within here, he has a lot of cool free, free scripts that you could use. I think it's over 50 or 60 scripts. And some of them are like the vSphere hardening guide. So what he did is he actually wrote a script that will check all your hosts and actually compare that against to what you would see in the ESXi hardening guide. Um, he wrote that. He wrote uh, something to be able to do ghetto host profiles. He also has a script in there that does backups of your, of your virtual machines within your infrastructure uh, through a script. So you actually don't have to worry about buying a commercial product. Uh, granted, it's not pretty because it's all CLI based, but it does work. I would definitely go and check it out and say thanks if you use any of his of his scripts because they're definitely very very useful. And one of the new ones that just came out uh, recently comes from Nick Weaver, and he makes he actually makes a few different tools, um, but the latest one is called Uber Align. Uh, I would encourage everybody that runs a Windows environment to go and check this out because if you don't know much about alignment within virtual machines. Uh, you should probably start reading up. So alignment is very crucial for performance, uh, whether it be for Windows 2003 or Windows XP machines because of uh, block, block alignment. And Uber Align is the first free tool out there that will actually align your virtual machines based on the offset that's needed. Uh, a lot of these programs before were something that you had to pay for. You had to be a, a member uh, of a specific SAN vendor. So he actually put this out here, and it's the only free tool available that will actually align all your virtual machines so you can actually start seeing better performance within those Windows environments. Another tool comes, uh, it's called VMware Scanner. Uh, this is from runvirtual.com, and, you know, I actually I talked to the developer of this at VMworld, and he said you would be absolutely surprised by how many ESXi servers are just out there on the public Internet. So what you can actually do is you can just type in a range of IP addresses and start scanning, 
And what it allows you to do is it allows you to actually kind of break a hole within ESX and actually do an API call to an ESX server without authenticating against it. And you can actually see what version of ESXi is actually running out there. So definitely something to look at if you just have rogue servers or if you just want to go poking around the Internet. Yeah, another free tool comes from a website called thinware.net. And uh, this is actually a guy uh, that I met at VMworld out of Dallas, Texas. He's an independent developer. And uh, what he started to do is create his own backup tool for uh, VMware vSphere. And he calls it vBackup from thinware.net. And um, what it does today is it uses actually uh, the older uh, VMware consolidated backup uh, tool to access the virtual infrastructures virtual infrastructure and the VMFS file system. So uh, it's not quite as up-to-date as, you know, some of the commercial tools, but hey, on the other hand, it's free. So he's got a free graphical uh, interface for uh, VMware Consolidated Backup, and he's coming out with new versions in the future. So that brings us to our key takeaways. What have we learned in this webinar? Well, we started off by talking about free tools and how free tools are everywhere. In fact, uh, Kendrick Coleman's website has a list of over 50 free vSphere tools uh, that you can go check out. He's got links to all of them, all the tools we talked about here, and more. These free tools are here to make your life as a VMware administrator easier and, hey, hopefully more fun. You know, it should be fun to do your, to do your job. And finally, um, I want you to know that you should go out there and try to support your developers. If you like these free tools, you know, let them know. If you have ideas for improvement, uh, let them know. Um, I've talked to many of these, uh, especially the larger companies, and said, hey, you guys should do a you know, free tool that does this. And sure enough, so six months later, they, they actually have come out with you know, some of the ideas that I gave them. So there's a lot of great free tools out there. Try to stay up to date by checking out uh, Kendrick's blog and, and my blog, um, and also even Eric Slew's blog. Um, we're always posting links and videos to free tools. So I want to thank you for attending our webinar. Um, again, my name is David Davis. My blog is vmwarevideos.com. Uh, there's my email address, my Twitter handle, David M. Davis. Uh, feel free to email me or you know, send me a, a message over on Twitter. And there's my information as well. You can reach me at kendrickcoleman at gmail.com or through my website or on Twitter. Thank you once again for everybody attending. We really appreciate your uh, coming through and listening to us. Uh, if you have any suggestions or free tools you'd like to see on here for hopefully VMworld 2012, let us know and we'll be sure to include them. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the, the Q&A box there. Um, if we don't answer them right now, you know, we will get to the questions um, later after the webinar. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to our moderator. Okay, thanks David and Kendrick. Uh, we actually don't have any outstanding questions right now, uh, so if you have any, feel free, submit them before you leave, and we'll go ahead and answer them via email. So don't forget before you leave to go ahead and take that survey so that you're eligible to win a copy of the VMware vSphere 5 training and the VNR t-shirt. And thanks again for attending and for your participation. Just as a reminder, today's webinar was recorded and will be available later today at trainsignal.com slash blog slash webinars. And as I mentioned, you will need to fill out the survey to be one of the three participants selected for the vSphere 5 training course and the vNerd t-shirts. And we will email the winners to let you know, so be on the lookout in your inbox. So thanks everyone so much for attending and have a great day.